Hey there. So sometimes when people are talking about science books, they get the wrong impression. There's this general stereotype that they can be dry and informative, but not really terribly interesting. I think people need to give them more of a chance. Science can be an incredible exploration story. It can be a way of seeing how people push the limits, how we learn more than we ever thought possible. Some are driven by curiosity and some of them are driven by a need for survival. So today I wanted to share a few nonfiction science books that definitely show you don't have to be a scientist, you don't have to be some kind of genius to appreciate the stories in these very human lessons that they offer. We are currently living through the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 13 mission, so it seems very appropriate to bring up the book that was written about it. Jim Lovell was the captain of that mission. Many people are familiar with this story because of the movie that came out in the 90s, and it really is an incredible story. And once the explosion in the oxygen tanks happened, these astronauts were still four days from home. and. It was about working the problem, working together. Now, while I will admit this book is a little thick, the text is a little small, and it can get pretty specific when it's talking about different people's roles and the different kind of science that they had to use to figure things out, but it's not very dry in the sense it's telling you enough science just so you can appreciate what each person was doing and it really is an incredible story. Hollywood could not make something like this up. If you're looking for something though that's maybe a little less heavy on the text but no less fascinating, I really highly recommend Astronauts Women on the Final Frontier. A lot of people don't know this, but there was a group of women who went through a lot of the same astronaut qualification tests that were issued to the original men who were asking to be in the program, and not only did they pass the tests, some of them did even better. However, women, at least from the United States, didn't go into space until the space shuttle missions started in the 80s. So this is a really great graphic novel, and it goes through both women in the United States and their journey into space, as well as how Russia also, we, they were the first to send a woman back in the 60s during the space race. So this is a graphic novel. It's really accessible, very informative. I learned so much about the program that I didn't know before. But space and science books aren't limited to astronauts. Like I said, there's still mission control. There's plenty of people on the ground who still contributed a ton. And for that reason, I want to bring up Katherine Johnson. You may know her name from the movie Hidden Figures that came out a few years ago. She lived to be over 100 years old, and it wasn't until recently that people really started giving her the recognition she deserved for all of the work she did. And in her years before she passed away, she wrote an autobiography specifically with kids and young readers in mind about her journey from humble beginnings to eventually working as a computer at NASA. And that's right, before we had these uh, gigabyte technological devices called computers, a computer was the job title of someone who would compute, who would do the math. And she is maybe best known now because of that movie that came out for the math that she did on John Glenn's space flight. You don't have to be a math genius to appreciate the work she did and the contributions she had. So those are just a few science books that are space related that still tell us a lot about what people can do when they work together and how much exploration is left in store. If any of these sound interesting, I highly recommend that you check to see if they're available from your local library or independent bookstores can really use our support right now. That's it for me for now. Take care. Bye.